Did you know the first step to the perfect cup of coffee starts with choosing the right beans? Indeed, the journey to a soul-warming cup of coffee begins in the lush coffee plantations where beans of different types are cultivated. There are primarily three types of coffee beans, Arabica, Robusta, and Liberica. Arabica beans are the most popular, accounting for about 60% of the world's coffee production. They are known for their sweet, delicate flavor and low acidity. Robusta beans, on the other hand, are more robust, as the name suggests. They have a stronger, more bitter flavor and contain twice as much caffeine as Arabica. Lastly, Liberica beans are rare and possess a unique fruity flavor profile. If you're just starting your coffee journey, I'd recommend beginning with a light, medium or dark roast Arabica. Light roasts are more acidic, with a toasted grain taste and pronounced flavors. Medium roasts strike a balance between acidity and a robust coffee flavor. Dark roasts, however, have a pronounced bitterness, with the roast's flavor often overshadowing the bean's original taste. But let's not forget the crucial aspect of freshness. Coffee, like any other food product, is best when it's fresh. Buying whole beans and grinding them just before brewing ensures you get the most flavor out of them. Pre-ground coffee may be convenient, but it loses its aroma and flavor over time due to exposure to oxygen. So if you want to brew a truly remarkable cup of coffee, invest in a good grinder and always opt for whole beans. Remember, fresh is best when it comes to coffee beans. Now let's move on to the next step. Now that you've got your fresh coffee beans, it's time to grind them. Here's how. The importance of coffee grinding cannot be overstated. When you grind your coffee, you're taking an important step in flavor extraction, the process that pulls the delicious coffee taste from the beans and into your cup. The size of your coffee grind plays a significant role in this. Think about it this way. If you have a large grind size, the water will flow through the coffee grounds quickly, resulting in under-extracted coffee. This can often taste sour and lack the depth of flavor you're looking for. On the other hand, if your grind size is too small, the water will take longer to pass through, leading to over-extracted coffee, which can taste bitter and harsh. So, what's the perfect grind size? Well, that depends on your brewing method. For a robust espresso, you'll want a fine grind, something akin to powdered sugar. If you're using a drip coffee maker, you'll want a medium grind, similar to the consistency of sand. And for a French press, a coarse grind, roughly the size of sea salt, is ideal. Now let's talk about grinders. For consistent results, I recommend a burr grinder. Unlike blade grinders, which can produce a mix of both finely and coarsely ground beans, burr grinders provide a uniform grind size, which is key to achieving a balanced flavor. Burr grinders come in two types, manual and electric. Manual grinders are quieter and cheaper, but they do require a bit more effort. Electric grinders, while more expensive, are quicker and easier to use. Both types can give you a great grind, so it's really a matter of personal preference. Remember, coffee is a science, but it's also an art. Feel free to experiment with different grind sizes and see how it affects the flavor. After all, the goal is to find your perfect cup of coffee. With the right grind, you're one step closer to that perfect cup of coffee. You might think it's just a spoonful of coffee, but proper measurement is key to a great brew. Let's dive into the world of coffee measurements, a land filled with ratios, scales, and yes, a bit of math. But don't worry, I promise it'll be fun. The golden rule of coffee brewing is the coffee to water ratio. A good starting point is one part coffee to 15 parts water. But this isn't a hard and fast rule. You can adjust this ratio to suit your taste. If you like your coffee strong, use a bit more coffee. If you prefer it lighter, use a bit less. The key is to experiment and find the ratio that's perfect for you. Now let's talk about different brewing methods. They each have their own ideal coffee to water ratios. For an espresso, you typically use a one to two ratio. That's one part coffee to two parts water. On the other hand, a drip coffee or a French press would use a one to 15 or one to 17 ratio. Again, these are starting points. Feel free to play around with the numbers, but here's the catch. No matter how carefully you measure your coffee, if you're using tap water, you might not get the best flavor. Tap water can contain minerals and chemicals that affect the taste of your coffee. That's why it's important to use filtered water. It's cleaner and can really let the flavors of your coffee shine through. And there's one more thing. 
When measuring your coffee, be precise. Use a digital scale if you can. It's more accurate than a spoon or a scoop. And remember, we're aiming for consistency here. The more consistent your measurements, the more consistent your coffee will taste. So in summary, measure your coffee carefully. Adjust your coffee to water ratio to suit your taste. Use filtered water and be consistent. It might sound a bit complicated, but trust me, once you get the hang of it, it's as easy as pie. Or should I say, as easy as brewing a delicious cup of coffee? Remember, precision is your friend in making a great cup of coffee. Now that you've got your measured coffee, it's time to choose your brewing method. The world of coffee brewing methods is as diverse as the people who enjoy this beloved beverage. Each method imparts its unique characteristics to the end product, shaping the flavor, aroma, and even the body of the coffee. Let's dive into a few popular methods. First up, we have the espresso machine. Espresso is a concentrated form of coffee, known for its robust flavor and thick creamy creamer on top. This method requires a bit of practice and some specialized equipment, but the result is a rich and intense coffee experience. Next, we have the drip coffee maker. This is probably the most common method found in kitchens worldwide. Drip coffee makers are easy to use and can brew a large quantity of coffee at once. Although they don't offer as much control over the brewing process as some other methods, they produce a consistent and reliable cup of joe. For those who like a hands-on approach, the French press is an excellent choice. This method involves steeping coffee grounds in hot water and then pressing them down with a plunger. The result is a full-bodied coffee with a rich flavor profile. Plus, the French press is simple to use and doesn't require any fancy equipment. Lastly, the pour-over method. A favorite among coffee connoisseurs, this method involves pouring hot water over coffee grounds in a filter. The water slowly drips through the grounds and into a carafe or cup. Pour-over allows for precise control over the brewing process, resulting in a clean and nuanced flavor. If you're a beginner, I'd recommend starting with the drip coffee maker or the French press. They're user-friendly, require minimal equipment, and still yield a delicious cup of coffee. Remember, there's no right or wrong here. It's all about personal preference. Don't be afraid to experiment with different methods until you find the one that brings out the best in your chosen coffee beans. Each brewing method has its unique charm. Find the one that suits your taste best. Now the moment you've been waiting for, let's brew your coffee. The brewing process is where all your hard work comes together to create that perfect cup. Here we'll highlight the key steps and emphasize the importance of timing. First things first, ensure your coffee maker, whether it's a French press, espresso machine, or a drip coffee maker, is clean. This step is crucial as old residue can taint the fresh flavor of your coffee. Next, preheat your coffee maker. Fill it with hot water and let it sit for a minute before discarding the water. This step ensures that your coffee brews at the right temperature. Now, add your freshly ground coffee to the coffee maker. The amount you add will depend on your chosen brewing method and personal taste. If you're unsure, start with a one-to-one -one ratio of coffee to water and adjust from there. The next step is to add water. Remember to use filtered water to avoid any unpleasant flavors. The temperature of the water is also important. Ideally, it should be just off the boil, around 95 to 98 degrees Celsius. Now let's talk about the brewing process itself. This is where the magic happens. The water begins to extract the flavors from the coffee grounds. You'll notice a bloom forming on the top of your coffee. This is a sign that the coffee is fresh and the brewing process is going well. The length of time you let your coffee brew will depend on your chosen brewing method. With a French press, for example, you'll want to let it brew for about four minutes. For a drip coffee maker, it might be around five minutes. Remember, patience is key here. Don't rush the brewing process. After the brewing time is up, it's time to enjoy your coffee. Pour it into a preheated mug to maintain its temperature. And there you have it, a perfectly brewed cup of coffee. As you sip, take a moment to appreciate the aroma, the flavor, and the warmth. After all, isn't that what coffee is all about? Now that your coffee is brewed to perfection, it's time to enjoy it. First things first, let's talk about the vessel. A quality mug can make a world of difference. It not only retains the heat, ensuring that your coffee stays at the perfect temperature longer, but can also enhance the flavor. Whether it's a classic ceramic mug, a double-walled glass, or a travel tumbler for those on the go mornings, the right mug can truly elevate your coffee experience. Next, 
let's talk about personalizing your brew. The beauty of coffee is its versatility. You can enjoy it as is, or you can add a little something to make it your own. A splash of milk or a dollop of cream can transform the taste and texture. Whether you prefer your coffee black with a hint of sweetness or flavored with a dash of vanilla or a sprinkle of cinnamon, the choice is yours. Remember, there's no right or wrong way to enjoy coffee. It's all about what pleases your palate. And, of course, coffee isn't just a drink, it's an experience. It's about savoring the moment, whether that's in quiet solitude with a good book or in the company of friends and loved ones. And what better way to enhance that experience than with a complimentary pairing? A rich, dark roast might pair beautifully with a sweet pastry, while a light roast could be the perfect companion to a savory breakfast sandwich. Experiment with different combinations to discover what delights your taste buds. So, with your preferred mug in hand, your personalized brew steaming invitingly, and a delicious pairing at the ready, you've transformed a simple cup of coffee into a moment of pure pleasure. It's the perfect way to start your day, take a break, or wind down in the evening. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy your perfect cup of coffee. So that's all there is to making the perfect cup of coffee at home. We've journeyed through selecting the right beans, grinding them to perfection, measuring accurately, and finally, brewing to your taste. Don't be afraid to experiment and find what works best for you. Maybe a medium roast with a French press, or a dark roast brewed in a drip coffee maker. Every cup is a chance to discover something new. Thanks for joining us on this coffee adventure. Remember, the perfect cup of coffee is the one that tastes best to you. Happy brewing!